Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch and today I've got not one but two Unity releases for you. First off we have the uh, LTS version of Unity 2020 and we have the text stream version, Unity 2021.1, both available for download right now. Now neither of these are beta, they're just different versions. We'll get into what those differences are in just a second, but first let's do some eye candy. What you see here, this is Unity uh, 2020.1 and you'll notice there is a new HDRP uh, demonstration scene. Better shows, up, uh, shows off the capability of the high definition render pipeline and another really cool thing that they've done in this release is they fixed the mistake they made and that's actually kind of a common theme with both the releases right now and they're both steps in the right direction now what they tried to do uh, with unity in general is make it as modular as possible that means even the render pipelines were packages and that created dependency hell what they have done now is the standard pipeline or the udrp and the hdrp are both core to unity again so that means you no longer have to download it as a package you no longer have all the breakages that would come with that and this my friends is a good move okay so we're gonna head on over first we'll discuss what the difference between the lts and the um the text stream releases and then uh, we'll get into some of the details about both so first off long-term support is what LTS stands for. Basically, that version is going to keep getting updates, bug fixes, security fixes, that kind of thing, but no real breaking changes. So if you're setting out to make a commercial game that you're going to be shipping in a year or two's time and you need stability in your releases, that's the version you want to go with. Whereas text stream releases, these are the newest, latest, and greatest. This isn't a beta release. Everything in there should, in theory, be production ready, but there'll be dragons. So just do be aware, if you're trying to create a game and you want a stable supported platform to work from at least as good as you can get when it comes to game engines like unity uh the lts version is what you want to go with if you're still like planning your game you haven't really dropped in yet or you need the latest and greatest features text stream is where you want to go and basically all the fun shiny new stuff is going to be in text stream so we got a breakdown of what is in both of these versions. I'm going to go through some of the release notes here. So uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, the 2020 LTS releases, the, the top level features there. The first new feature is now it has quality. <laughs> okay, uh, so now it comes with safe mode, which is actually kind of nice. You start up the uh, editor. If you start running into problems, you need to streamline what is causing the issues. You can boot the editor up in safe mode now. Again, for something like a long-term stable support or long-term supported version, that is nice stuff. It also has some productivity stuff, including C Sharp 8 syntax additions such as streamlined switch expressions and nullable reference types. So uh, Unity supports many other additions to C-Sharp 8, but it doesn't sound like 100% of C-Sharp 8 is there. But for all of us that were stuck at C-Sharp, what was it, 4 for like decades? Well, that's nice to see. And we've got some improvements on the performance side of things in the profiling tools. Uh, OpenXR support was added. OpenXR, it's kind of like the umbrella for virtual reality and augmented reality. It is the one true SDK to rule them all. At least that seems to be the way the industry is going. Uh, then just to go somewhere different from there, because Apple being Apple, well, they also have AR foundation. So AR is kind of things that OpenXR should be handling, but it's their AR or augmented reality specific stuff. Um, LiDAR is uh, radar types that are pretty specific to the newest generation of iPhone stuff. Although I do believe that there is a version of LiDAR built into my Samsung S21. Uh, but anyways, AR Foundation updated as well. There is now Quest 2 support. So uh, if you've got an Oculus Quest 2, via the Oculus link, you can actually iterate projects directly to the Unity editor, which is nice. And then Adaptive Performance uh, now has new samples here. Uh, so if you want to get into variable fresh rate and so on, there are some samples to check out there. Uh, so that is the 2020 LTS release. There's, there's, there's more to it. There's much more fine-tuned and granular stuff in the release notes, but it's way beyond what we want to talk about today. Whereas 2021, well, that is normally where all the fun new stuff happens, but um, Unity put on their big boy pants and started working on, you know, things like stability and maturity and uh, developer concerns. And, you know, how they got released all of that DOT stuff, the data-oriented technology stack that was the future, things like the burst compiler, the job system, and all of that. And then they had to build all new libraries to go with all the DOT stuff they built. And then they had all of these new rendering pipelines that had to work with DOTs and not DOTs. And then basically, they broke their engine. So what they're doing now is fixing their engine. Now, the first thing, as I mentioned earlier on, is the scriptable render pipeline, which includes the uh, universal render pipeline or the ERP and the HD render pipeline is now part of Unity Core. This is smart. So now 
it is just part of Unity. When you get a new version of Unity, it will have the newest version of the render pipelines. The reality is nobody was going to use Unity, or at least it was an incredible edge case, without one or the other of the pipelines. So this is going to make uh, dependency hell a heck of a lot easier. It's also going to make people that are actually building uh, add-ons, etc., for Unity uh, probably a lot less stressed out. So like I said, it is now, those render cores are now part of core Unity. That is smart. Move them out of packages, move them back into the core, boom. And we also had improvements across the board to give you faster build times from general c -sharp script compilation improvements, including background compilation of some scripts to ILCPP, which is the intermediate layer to CPP, the thing that turns c -sharp into C++. And Unity linker enhancements, you'll notice much speedier experiences in editor going from in editor to play mode and back again. Again, big boy stuff. It runs faster, more stable. Uh, and that's that's good stuff. Good good work, Unity. It's not the sexiest things you've ever worked on, but it's the stuff that needed to happen. And we got some new performance upgrades. So 2D sprite processing uh, improvements are faster with lower memory usage, large number of sprites with new process options, faster sprite slicing. Sprite libraries uh, assets enable you to easily swap out sprites to customize environments or characters. 2D tile maps also received a UX and stability improvements. We'll get into that a little bit in a second. And uh, Build once, deliver anywhere, take your content anywhere your users want. With Unity, you will get the most, uh, okay, that's just a general catch-all. Uh, and we here have the XR integration toolkit. This is pre-release. Obviously, this is not considered ready for Alpha. Uh, add interactivity to your AR and VR experience without having to code the interaction from scratch with new samples to demonstrate it. AR Foundation 4.1, you may be having deja vu here. Well, in the, and this is kind of an example of LTS versus TechStream. LTS, they added 4.2. Oh, support here. They're adding the newest and greatest version here. Uh, and that is kind of the top level of it. So there, there's not, you know, going to set the world on fire new features here, but there's definitely, uh, they're focusing on the right things in my humble opinion. So moving on from there, there are a couple of coder specific things in 2021. Uh, we had changes to, and this is well, way overdue, but uh, there is better precision in the way that game loops run. And that should help game developers in general. Uh, Unity code coverage package with test runner to check for test coverage, your project's code. Uh, latest API features by leveraging version defines to gain backward compatibility for older versions of Unity and the API all within a single code base. Support for multiple player profiling, test different platforms with device simulator. That actually is kind of nice. I got to do a, probably an individual video on device simulator at one of these dates in time. Uh, create logic with visual scripting. So again, better integration. They, they kind of, I'm not sure that, that dot script is still going to happen or not, but Bolt is definitely getting a lot of love. And it looks like it's going to at least be incorporated into what becomes dot script. It's definitely a priority for them. Uh, improved Unity linker for faster, smaller executables. IL to CPP optimizations for better project uh, conversions. And comprehensive memory profiling. So those are some of the coder-specific things that are in this version. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there are full and complete release notes for both versions. I'm not going to get into the granularity of these guys. Guys, you know, known issues, smaller fixes. So there is a lot being improved behind the scenes that you're going to find. Now, in this particular case, again, it's a long-term support version. So it's mostly bug fixes at that stage. But over here, this is where we're in the 2020 tech stream version. Again, I will link both these down below. Uh, we get into a, a bit more detail about what is going on here. So there's, there's more features. I just air quoted that. I know you can't see me, but there are more features added in 2021 tech stream than we already covered. Things like real-time point light shadows to the universal render pipeline, a number of just improvements across the board on things. Here is that device simulator. So basically you can do things like emulate Google Pixel, Excel, HTC devices, Apple devices, and so on. Uh, head on down some more. They got this new sprite. Remember they said that there's new tile map UX experiences. There's actually a video in here on it for, stri um, for splicing sprite sheets for usage in tile maps in 2021.1. That's harder to say than you'd think. Um, and basically, there's, there's a lot more here. This is another nice one, actually. There's Pro Builder, which is used to be a plugin. They bought it. They've incorporated it in. And it's been part of Unity for like two or three years now. Uh, it got now the ability to do point cuts uh, directly on faces, which is actually kind of cool for creating cutting out arbitrary shapes. So if you're doing like white boxing of your level, uh, Pro Builder got a little bit more functionality there. And uh, yeah, 
So the rest of this, a bit of a repetition of what we covered. As you can see, a lot of smaller fixes and changes and improvements in here as well. If there is a release note that you want to come down here and read. Oh yeah, also, XPX, this is actually kind of cool. They updated the FBX exporter package out. Um, so if you want to get your scene content out from Unity, you can use the FBX exporter, which is kind of cool. So anyways, that is it. As you can see, it kind of keeps going and going in terms of fixes in this particular version. And done. So again, what it boils down to is if you are writing a game now and you want stability and you want to have it so that it doesn't break your code over time, but you want to have bug fixes and improvements, go with an LTS version. If you are willing to risk it or you want the latest and greatest, go with the TechStream version. And if you want to have more fun and excitement in life, go with the TechStream version. I always go with the TechStream version, but I'm also a bit of an idiot. So let me know what you think of these two releases, Unity in general, and their focus on big boy stuff. Things like uh, performance, uh, you know, actually making a product that works, cutting down some of the dependency hell stuff, uh, language improvements, uh, safe mode, uh, better compilation speeds, that kind of stuff. That's what they're focusing on, and they're fixing and improving dots behind the scene. What they've done is they've taken dots out so that you're not seeing them build it in the public eye with mostly broken and interdependent stuff. They're working on it on the back end, and then they will present it to us when they're ready, and that's the way they should have done it since day one. But it's nice to see they have learned from their mistakes. So what do you think? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.